I'm Brian Paterka, this is Secret Economics, and here is my six-figure strategy. Let me give you a little backstory. I got out of prison after doing five years. When I came home, I didn't have shit. I walked out the gate with two things, a handwritten business plan and a book that I scribed. But I didn't have any money to get these things off the ground. I told myself that I needed $100,000 to get to work and I wasn't gonna ask nobody for shit because they wasn't gonna give it to me anyway. It took me two years, blow this post up and I'll tell you how I did. I developed this strategy reflecting my first milestone of $100,000 and organized it into 11 steps. Coming home to nothing, I found it difficult to stack even a single thousand dollars. My first objective was getting to 10 from zero. Considering my background, there have been times where I made $10,000 or more in a single day. Those options were no longer available to me for a number of reasons. One of them being it was those actions that put me in this position in the first place. And another being the consequences for my resources were even more severe. And the majority of them were either murdered, doing life for murder, or serving decades in prison for drug trafficking or conspiracy. I didn't have any money, resources, or support system to assist me. The only value I had to offer in exchange for the money I needed was labor. So I sold my time for a wage knowing that a job is just a short-term solution to a long-term problem. I was quickly reminded of this temporary gratification when I found a job at a wireless store that was sold with me inside it a couple months later. And within weeks of me being hired, I was unemployed. So trying to preserve the little money I earned, the only dots I could connect were smoke related. Then I was quickly reminded the consequences of immediate gratification after getting pulled over with everything I had invested in one bag. I was on parole, waiting to be indicted, back at zero, it was a mess. I felt like I was locked up on the outside. It was the worst feeling in the world. I worked some dirty jobs, tearing off roofs and cleaning them up to make a measly $100 a day. I prayed to work at least two days because if I only worked one, my whole hundred dollars would go towards my grandmother's water bill where I was paroled to just so I could clean the soot out of my ears and nose. The plus side of the situation was the gratitude I developed towards a 40 hour work week, even if it was an undesirable job for a shitty wage. As long as I could multiply it 80 times in a pay period, I was gratified. So I found a job working the grill and the register in a cafe. It paid $11 an hour, 40 hours a week. But if I didn't wanna be stuck in the cycle of minimal wage, I had to squeeze. Squeezing is just reversing the role of the exploitive nature of employment that demands long hours for a low wage. Instead of utilizing our employment to maintain a standard of living, we have to learn to temporarily reduce this standard of living. Just to avoid being transfixed, squandering our entire paychecks on bills, rent, and utility. So instead of maintaining only what your employment allows you to retain, you retain your earnings instead. With nothing to maintain, your employer relies on you for productivity and has no leverage over your lifestyle. The last thing I wanted to do was earn the lifestyle of a burger flipping cashier with no money to spare. I had to delay the immediate gratification of the things I wanted and even the things I thought I needed for the things I want eventually. Because eventually I wanted a bag bigger than this place could ever offer. I had the projections of the things I would be able to do if only I had the capital to start my business. And it wasn't going to happen with what I earn in only a few pay periods. With only one stream of income, I had to remind myself how little I can actually live off of. And economizing this tiny stream actually became my second stream of income. The cliche, a penny saved is a penny earned, proves itself true in application. The objective was, how many checks could I stack without cashing them? And the strategy to that is something I call preserving thirds. You only have three expenses considered necessity. And when you only work for a small amount of income, your entire income is outlaid on these three expenses. One third is transportation in order to get to and from work. The second is the rent and utilities you pay just to have a place to rest when you're not at work. Then you have to eat to live so you can work. And if you make around $20,000 a year like I did making $11 an hour, one third of all the money you make, you eat. Luckily for me, I worked in the food industry. So for five days a week, I ate for free and took the food that would normally be thrown in the trash home with me. But if I worked a shitty job without that luxury, one thing I learned in prison was how far a $20 grocery list would go. I can show you 20 different ways to cook a noodle and get full off 50 cents. 
But my luck didn't stop there. I was on parole at my grandmother's house, so I didn't have to worry about the expense of rent and utilities, but I did pitch in. Even though I was hardly there because I picked up a second job to squeeze catering part-time. But if I didn't have that luxury, I'd knock on somebody's door. Like, just give me nine months to get on my feet. I'll pay a utility. You won't even see me because I'm going to be so busy adding to my bag that I'm hardly here. And if nobody answers, I'll be at 2100. If you don't know what 2100 is, that's the homeless shelter here in Cleveland. Because I refuse to work a job and net nothing. Because if you think like the business that you live and breathe to work for, and all your expenses are spent on operation, your business is not profitable because it nets nothing. But don't just think like a business. Become a business that relies on its bottom line. As a business, it is your nature and responsibility to increase profits. And there are only two methods to do that. Increasing revenue and cutting costs. Ironically, working for a business, reducing your wage is their way of cutting cost. Applying that same strategy, consider yourself a business that renders services that are sourced to you by your employer. You too must cut costs and squeeze every single dollar you can to feed your bottom line. You will not allow low income to exempt you from wealth. Consider the fact that 54% of all consumers in the United States live paycheck to paycheck, meaning their entire income is outlaid on their expenses. They are left with no residual, therefore netting zero dollars. There are six figure incomes in that category. That means that if you are working a shitty kitchen job that anybody can find considering a 46% employee turnover rate and you're able to preserve only one third of your income, you're technically wealthier in terms of liquidity than a doctor or a lawyer that's drowning in debt living paycheck to paycheck. So let's do some quick motivational math so we can get our first 10K out the way and start grinding towards our first 25. If you make $11 an hour with no expenses times 40 hours a week, less taxes and divide 10,000, that brings you to your first objective just shy of 34 weeks. But don't quit your shitty job just yet. It would take you near a decade of sacrifices to reach $100,000 with this strategy alone. But now you have enough money to execute the next strategy and double what you've done in half the time. To get to 25K, you're gonna look for a dub. So let's look at our math from a different perspective. By scenario, every two weeks you've brought home about $600. Divided by the 10 days you've rendered services, you've made about $60 a day. You have $10,000 in capital. How hard could it be to scrape up another $60 a day? This is important because for one, it's easy to obtain and two, it doubles your wage. You're only three months away from 20. There's so much opportunity here, I don't even know where to begin. Try monetizing a hobby. Let me tell you how I stumbled across one. I had a very detailed business plan written and ready to execute. I had to compile my handwritten business plan that I wrote while I was incarcerated and type it into a document, a document that you can download and use for reference, by the way. It'll come in handy if you follow along the seven elements of a strategic business plan video. But anyway, I also had to compile sketches for my branding strategy and illustrate them in the graphics. I found joy creating my logo and static ads with a free application I found. I provided a link to this application in the post that I'm referencing linked in the description. I brought my business into existence digitally, creating business profiles online on every social media platform. Facebook gives you the opportunity to join social groups for just about any industry. I took advantage of that opportunity to start building my network. Before I even had anything to offer, the compliments on those posts led to inquiries for graphics and static ads. A simple graphic that I could create in 10 minutes earned me $20 or more. That required no capital or overhead. I could have done that months ago. But a little money opens the door to other opportunity. But how do you find this opportunity? Everyone you know or come in contact with is a consumer. So instead of asking, what can I sell? Ask yourself, who do you know and what are they buying? You're still thinking like a business. So every time you see money spent, your mind should be calculating margins. Margin is just the difference between cost and price, the profit. The labor laws in China are no secret. So that's where you shop for product cost. If you are not familiar with Alibaba, get familiar. If Alibaba was available to me 12 years ago, I would have never went to prison. If I wanted to source products directly from China in 2010, I would have to know somebody who knew somebody in China who knew a distributor, who knew a manufacturer that I would have to pay $26 a minute to talk to. Not to mention $10,000 for a round trip just to see the factory. 
Alibaba is an app that allows me to contact distributors directly, negotiate cost, quantity, and quality, phone, message, or video conference in factory, and follow that same process for free with nobody in my pocket. I link the distributors for the products that I flipped for the most profit in the description. After you've identified your potential profit margin, you should ask yourself, how can I add value? Value can be as simple as offering convenience or availability. Once you have the math figured out, you can start connecting dots for profit. I was able to make $13,917.50 off one product from an investment that only cost me $67 connecting dots for a profit. In 2017, I connected dots that were vape related, not like the smoke related dots a year earlier. Everybody was vaping and there was a market for batteries. Vape battery pens were 67 cents with an MOQ or a minimum order of 100 units, costing me $67 for 100 units that I sold for $10 a piece. I added value by extending warranties since the batteries were cheap and they broke all the time. But the same batteries were sold at corner stores and gas stations for $15 or more. It might have taken me about eight weeks to almost 15x my investment, but when I reinvested my profit along with the initial cost for 1,492 units, I added even more value by cutting the price in half and only charging $5. This gave me a faster inventory turnover, which made me more money. Turning my initial $67 investment into $6,460 that I reinvested into 11,134 units, which would have taken me years to distribute. So I wholesaled them for $1.25 to the same gas stations, corner stores, and smoke shops that sold them for $15. Those same batteries are like five bucks wholesale now, though. I could have held them and made a killing. But here's a little side tip. I like to make sure that everybody who deals with me directly makes more money off of me than I make off of them and their individual transaction. This cultivates a money motivated relationship that enables and empowers both of our businesses. What is this worth to you? To me, it's worth about three cents worth of paper, ink, and other materials. While a quarter is worth 10 cents worth of zinc and copper. The irony is a penny is worth two and a half times its value just in copper alone. You ever notice this disclosure right here? This is an indication of fiat, something accepted by law, not because it's redeemable. The only reason it's worth more than three cents is because people like you and me accept it for its face value. But do you know a currency far more valuable and easier to come by? I'll wait. It's the association on the other end of the exchange. Once you make sense of that, these exchanges will happen a lot more often all without not being able to lose at the same time because I started off small and grew perpetually. Executing my perpetual inventory method by reinvesting my profits from the sale of this product into more inventory. It also gave me the opportunity to understand my cash conversion. This is the amount of time it's gonna take you to convert your inventory into cash from sales. So I was able to draw a clear picture of how long it would take me to sell X amount of products with X amount of profits in X amount of time. A $1,000 profit can be worth more than a $5,000 profit that takes you 10 times longer to make. I was able to capitalize with just a hand-to-hand -hand hustle mentality. Had I known how to sell on Amazon, then my local boundaries would have dissipated. I provided a list of products in kind with comparable profit margins linked in the description. Like this grinder LED glass jar display that you can buy for around $5. The minimum order is around 100 to 240 units, but these items are currently selling on Amazon for around $20. Or these custom printed matte finished soft touch Ziploc finesse bags. They have a cost of about three cents with a minimum order of about 300, totaling a minimum investment of $9. Similar items are sold on Amazon in packs of 100 for about $22. You can't lose. I love marketable items that you could buy for about a dollar and sell for $10 like these custom metal rolling trays. It'll cost you around two bucks, but you could sell them for about 10 bucks easy. I provided the links to all of these items. They're just a reflection of my experience, but you can identify your own market and opportunity. Even though it makes for a good story, my brand is based on authenticity and I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you like I didn't cut corners. I started this process broke, hungry, and halfway homeless. There are things that I've done that I don't encourage, but the principle still applies to this strategy. My eye is trained to always identify demand. So in an impoverished condition, I identified a demand for a prescription that people would take to keep awake at work. So I Googled ADHD symptoms. I scheduled an appointment and that prescription paid for my first apartment. 
But there was another demand that I identified on the other side of the law that prohibits anybody from selling or attempting to sell replicated or counterfeit products. Laws in place do reduce the availability of these products, making them more difficult to find. So I bought these for $11. These are not fake AirPods. They're solutions for parents who have six, seven, or eight year olds that are asking for something that they're most likely gonna either lose or break. One point in time, I loaded the trunk of my schmug up with these solutions that I sold for $60 a piece. I communicated the fact that they are not authentic and realized that they had a market of their own. Let me give you some quick math, along with a disclaimer and a quick tutorial. There's a calculated risk, but it still beats selling drugs. But it's better than selling drugs, so I provided a link to the distributor. For $220, I purchased 20 units that I sold for $60 a piece. Reinvesting the $1,200 I made into 109 more units that I wholesaled for $25 to make $12,375. And like the batteries, I continued to grow perpetually. That is until I opened my business that wasn't wireless, which made me more susceptible to very large fines that I wanted to avoid. But before that, I would sling these things out of the trunk of my car. A car that I bought for $1,000, by the way. Another side tip, buy here, pay here car lots are built to capitalize by exploiting poor people. Chances are they have something in the back that they gave somebody next to nothing for a trade-in that runs, but they can't figure out what else is wrong with it. So ask them what they have in the back. I found this 2007 Nissan Maxima that was damaged in a flood, but still ran for about a thousand bucks. I got two years out of that thing. And by then I was able to buy a seven series and open my business. But by then I was able to identify the cash conversions for the items that I sold inside my place of business. And these items also helped me make the startup cost to start my business in the first place. It's like accessories and tempered glass that I purchased for around a dollar and sold for $10. I extended warranties for life on items that I sold out of my trunk or my backpack that customers would later come in and exchange in a beautiful place of business. I've also provided links to similar items in the description. I linked these AirPod cleaning brush pens that I found for about 45 cents. 10 bucks easy. I wish I would have found them a long time ago. As your eye for opportunity develops and you are able to narrow in on a specific industry, the items and trends that require your focus will become more clear. My focus was wireless and wireless repair. While some products only trend for the moment, you could just ride the wave as these products trend out. It's improbable that you take any real losses because you started off small and grew perpetually. But other products that display growth might be worth the effort to brand and build a business around. White labeling, for example, is when a manufacturer allows you to brand their products with a logo or a design. This is something Louis Vuitton is notorious for. All of the links that I provided offer the option to customize their products or packaging. So for 10 cents or less, they'll smack your logo on there. By now, you should be able to accumulate at least $25,000 that took me about nine months from zero. In order to get to the next level, margins on individual items will lose their importance. We're going to cut our profits to put a stronger focus on volume and inventory turnover. The example I gave earlier is a clear depiction of how I made more money selling items at a lower price and higher volume. The success of your business is not determined by profit margin. It's determined by its cash conversion. The same cash conversion that I keep mentioning. I'm going to spare you the accounting acumen for now. But to put it simply, your cash conversion is the amount of time it takes you to convert your inventory into cash from sales. And the best way to look at that is just basic math. So find the most profitable conversion for you within a 30-day period, or however often you plan to turn over your inventory. The worst thing you can do is assume the success of a product, exhaust capital only to be stuck with a bunch of inventory for months, quarters, and even years. It's in your interest to choose volume over profit. While growing your inventory perpetually, as your inventory grows, allow a percentage to be available wholesale and start implementing your business to business strategy until it consumes most or all of your inventory. Business is about money, the bottom line, net operating income. And this is why the drop shipping model doesn't work well for drop shippers. They're delivering to an end consumer with only 10 to 15% profit margins because they're not putting any cash up. In an industry where e-commerce has a 25% return exchange rate, where they can expect the higher end because they have no control over quality. But the wholesaler, in between the drop shipper and the manufacturer, 
eats. But if the drop shipper only bought these items wholesale with just a little bit of cash out of pocket, his or her profit margins of two, three, four, five hundred percent from the end consumer could afford a 25% return exchange rate. They could keep that channel alive, reinvesting their profits back into their inventory. It's not like we're dealing with scarce product, we're dealing with commodities. There's plenty for everybody. And that goes without saying, the more you buy, the cheaper these items get. It helps to be resourceful and shake as many hands as possible. Because every hand you shake is a consumer and a potential dot to connect for profit. An entire business can be sourced without capital if it has a strong enough network. And you can do this by simply leveraging your network of resources. Jewelry is typically sold at at least 100% markup. The process involved for custom jewelry is completely sourced, and the deposit required by the customer or end consumer is usually 50 or 60% before the piece is even made. That deposit pays for the entire process and costs the jeweler nothing out of pocket. There's a lot of money brokering big tickets connecting buyers to sellers for assignment fees. Cars, especially with our current economic conditions and inventory shortage. Houses, wholesaling real estate, etc. There is a wealth of opportunity out there that you won't even know exists if you don't shake hands and get social. I made a friend that made over a million dollars last year providing services for the state to care for clients with developmental disabilities. I immediately identified an opportunity connecting clients to agencies. An opportunity that I would have no idea existed if I didn't have a conversation. You can repeat any number of these processes until you are able to compile $50,000 or more. But don't make the mistake of thinking that you can just reach an accumulative amount of money without income. If you are not employed, you have no income. If however you make your money has no cash conversion cycle, you have no income. A single amount of money is incapable of financial security without some sort of dividend. If you follow this formula, by now, all of your means have proven themselves measurable. Market research can help you identify whether any of these means have the growth required to establish a business. Integrating Amazon, e-commerce, or any online distribution can establish your sales as an income-generating business. Attaching services to the products that you're selling and taking the time to create a brand can also create an income-generating business. I provided my branding strategy linked in the post that I'm referencing. At the end of the day, everything you sell is a commodity. The only thing that you own is your brand. This brand can also become intellectual property that you can license for profit. My business plan that you can view, download, and read in great detail, along with a template you can utilize to draw up your own business plan linked in the description, was built on services that I attached to replacement screens and protective accessories and generated $15,000 or more in profit with just one single location. And that didn't even include the wholesale distribution I established business to business, that I started off just selling accessories out of my hoopty. These expenses had to become income that occur more often than the expenses that will inevitably reoccur. I had to be able to afford the lessons I learned from the mistakes that I made so I could charge $250 an hour to consult because it's cheaper than the mistakes that someone is likely to make and has value. Feeling like I made it because I accomplished a certain dollar amount was one of my biggest mistakes. I was more financially comfortable with four, five, or $6,000 to my name, knowing that next month I'm gonna have 500, 1,000, or $1,500 more than having hundreds of thousands of dollars, knowing that next month I'm gonna have $30,000 less because of the expenses I accumulated. I like to look at the risk associated with business like the roulette table at the casino. You can never lose as long as you can afford to double your bet, but the moment you run out of money, you lose everything. At this point, you've worked hard and sacrificed a lot to acquire what you have. You kept your money tied up as a tool to make you more money. But now it's time to put your cash away so you can put it into your next venture and start leveraging your credit. Buy it, sell it, pay it off. Buy it, sell it, pay it off. Buy it, sell it, pay it off. And keep the profit in your pocket so you can keep adding it to the pile of money you just put aside. Now you have all of your capital available without compromising the streams of income that you already established. The same way you think like a business, start thinking like a bank. Amortizing is gradually paying off a debt over time. Your rent might be $12,000 a year, but it's amortized in $1,000 increments every month to make it more affordable. Since most of our expenses reoccur monthly, we tend to overlook the day-to-day -day expenses that accumulate within the same time period. 
Instead of identifying your current financial position, try identifying the pattern of your position and where it's going. If you have $50,000 in the bank and you spend $100, your current balance will reflect $49,900. In a previous state of mind, it might be fair to say that you still have 50 grand, but that pattern of thought can leave you with $3,000 less at the end of the month and a $9,000 reduction in just 90 days. Other things could have paid for those expenses, like the points you've accumulated on your credit card that you pay no interest on, the fuel perks from the groceries you bought so you don't eat out every day, renting your car out on Toro, Airbnb being a bedroom, etc., etc., etc. The point is, continue to retain as much of your earnings as you can, because in terms of the opportunity cost you lost, by spending something as small as $100 isn't just $9,000 lost in a quarter. Because if you made $100, at the end of the same quarter, you'd have $18,000 more than what you have now. So how do you feel about 2 or 3% returns? 10 years ago, I would have never considered spending $50,000 to profit $1,000. But my perspective changed calculating the same 2% in daily cycles. Because if you can do that every day, that same 2% can make you $30,000 a month. That money that you put to the side can now be a product in the form of a loan, sold at 2, 3, or even 5%, especially considering our current economic conditions and the Federal Reserve's effort to fight inflation by increasing interest rates. You're not offering the typical 15 or 30 year mortgage loans the banks offer, but you can offer transactional funding. Some people call it ABC funding, same day funding, or one day bridge loans. The current real estate market has created tremendous potential for opportunities like this. If you've watched this whole video, I have faith that you are resourceful enough to figure it out. Some of these things are not related to what I'm doing now, but it's how I got here. Now I can make $100,000 on something as simple as promoting free apps that you can download. That's something called CPA or cost per acquisition marketing that we're going to talk about in another video. But the information is linked in the post that I'm referencing. So keep squeezing, stack your streams, and continue to connect dots and network with as many people as possible. And don't forget I'm part of your network.